Good afternoon, Pastor. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment with Pastor David Unfiltered. Well, this weekend was a great weekend because we celebrated the Lord uh, on our the Day of the Lord on Sunday, and uh, and afterwards, uh, after having great service in church, there was a game on. Yeah, we watched the game. We watched the game, and it was a it was a good game, and, and it turned out the way we hoped. We had hoped so. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from that, Pastor, I, I wanted to get your feedback on something. You know, LA County has been one of the has the strictest mask mandate that requires individuals, regardless of vaccination status, to wear a mask indoors and at major sporting events. I, I everybody's seen the picture with Magic Johnson and our governor, the state of California governor, uh, Gavin Newsom, without a mask. There was Eric Garcetti, who was also there without a mask. Yep. There was San Francisco Mayor London Breed there without a mask. Can you speak a little bit about the hypocrisy that we see here? I mean, we have our governor who's, it's about a mask, you have to wear a mask, and then here, 70,000 plus and no mask. You know, that is a problem, and I know that a lot of uh, Americans, and speaking again just of the contemporary issues, you know, seeing that Tuesday is the time that we kind of speak of issues related to those things that are contemporary or going on at this moment and uh, and all of that. Yeah, that is something that, that some of the news outlets have picked up, not all of them, and most of them have kind of like brushed over them, saying that uh, these individuals were uh, taking their mask off only for pictures and this and that. The sad fact about that is that uh, there are pictures of them walking around without them in other places and so it's just uh, just not true. I, I believe that in in leadership one of the most important aspects of a, a leader's um, character and all is is that they're supposed to have the integrity to be believable. They're to be modeling those things that they that they are commanding others sometimes to actually follow. You look into the life of the Apostle Paul, for example, when he's there before the uh, the elders of uh, the Ephesian church, he's in a place called Miletus, and he summons them to come and to meet with him so that he may be able to give to them some final directives and all as it relates to the church and, and things that pertain to the life of the church and the people within it. And in uh, the book of Acts in chapter 20, starting somewhere around verse 17 or so to the end of the chapter, the Apostle Paul uh, begins to share with them by first pointing to himself, you know what manner of life I always lived amongst you. And he repeats that kind of sentiment more than once in his last uh, recorded uh, uh, sermon, if you will, or communication to these elders. But, but he said, you know what manner of life I always lived amongst you. That's a key in leadership. If you, if you don't follow the directives you give to others, then you are going to not be a good leader, you know. And so Jesus taught us as, as Christians that our yes is to be yes and our no should be no. And anything other than that is actually something that's just not right. And so, yeah, I have a, I have a, a problem with being given an order that those who give the order will not follow themselves. And I think a lot of... Americans feel the same way, and we here we are here in uh, San Bernardino County, and we're also adjacent to Riverside County, and so the sheriff Bianco apparently issued a uh, a statement. I read it. It's uh, it's been credited to him, where he said that the uh, the mayor and all of L.A. and the governor of California is not following his own mandates and apparently Bianca was saying um, that's the reason why he is not willing to enforce the mandates. I think it has a trickle-down effect if you will if the if the governor is not doing that which he tells others to do there's every reason for us to begin to believe or to at least wonder why what is good for me is not good for him <laughs> right. and uh, you know, I think Californians have uh, an obligation to question those things, John, not just to, to wonder. I also believe that Californians and anybody under some leadership 
has a, a moral obligation to to be very careful to see that that one who gives the orders and gives those commands uh, that they're faithful to the things they say are good for you. If they're good for you, they're good for him too. And so this hypocrisy is going to lead to the um, the ultimate changing of the direction of this nation because even those who do not subscribe to uh, to quote unquote Republican um, values are seeing some of the things that those who are Republican in the political system and and all uh, are are saying and seeing we we see hypocrisy and hypocrisy has a way of undermining authority you know it's as you're mentioning this and yes pastor thank you for reminding our viewers that on Tuesdays we do talk about current events and and things that are going on and hitting the news and on Thursdays we talk about the spiritual aspect of things but you know it's that saying that I think all of us have heard uh, do as I say and not that I not what I do. Not what I do. Yeah. And there's only that only goes so far until we get tired of it. I mean, I remember yeah. hearing that as a kid and yeah. thinking, well, who are you? Or, you know, I, I would have that. And I think it's going to come to a point where we reach that as we see these leaders doing that. Well, you know, John, you would know as well as I, you know, our, our testimonies um, contain uh, battles with drugs and alcohol. You know, and I, as a young man, thank God I got saved at an early age. I got saved at 20. Uh, but I'd already lived a life of uh, five years of increasing uh, alcohol and drug abuse and, and, and alcoholism. So uh, God was very gracious to save me at an early age. But I still remember when I was smoking pot before everybody decided uh, it is legal to do something like that. I still remember uh, when people who were drinkers would say that it's wrong for you to to smoke pot, and and uh, I always thought that was a bit a bit hypocritical uh, because you know the ones who were telling us that we shouldn't drink were often found to be drunk themselves. So I I I, I didn't parse those kinds of concepts. I just felt if if you're going to tell me that I shouldn't be giving myself over to a, a substance that changes my behavior. How in the world do you feel that you can tell me that when you're giving yourself over to the control of alcohol? And I wasn't even a Christian. I just saw through that. I just thought this is hypocrisy. So yes, I believe that if it's good for you, it's good for others. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, <laughs> is how we used to say it. And so yeah, contemporary um, illustrations of hypocrisy are, are, you know, they abound. and. We saw that on full display this last uh, Sunday when, when um, Newsom um, was there maskless. And, and, and then that gets into the issue of, do the masks even work? And, and, and it, there's a consensus now, even though it's not being broadcast uh, in every station, that the, that the masks, whether you wear one or two or whatever, really are not uh, keeping the, uh, the virus from spreading and the inoculations that they're saying that you need to have, you need to have these inoculations doesn't keep you from getting the, the illness, you know. And so uh, I, I just think that Americans and uh, are, myself included have a long time ago um, decided that we need, need to do what is best for ourselves to take care of ourselves because I, I have never believed the government cares about me. And again, John, and I'll close with this, um, um, a law that, uh, a governor that enacts a mandate or whatever, uh, saying that he cares about my health and yet believes in destroying the life of a baby in the womb is not somebody I'm gonna listen to. And uh, we've seen plenty of examples of that, you know, where these governors, you know, are saying, uh, I care about the old folk, and then they're they're putting COVID positive old people back in in convalescent homes, and 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 many many thousands of our elderly die. So uh, I I think there's reason why many Americans just don't trust uh, the government. We most certainly don't trust the media right. because the media is in in bed with uh with the democratic party yeah, that's obvious i right. mean anybody who would dispute that just doesn't really pay attention and this is why it's so important as we have midterm elections coming up 
uh, to really, as Christians, to vote. We need to, to get out there and do our due diligence yes. and and to get this hypocrisy out of office. Do the best that we can to to vote in somebody who at least uh, is closer to what you believe right. is right. We're, we're not going to have a savior elected. We already have one that's been given to us. And every human being is prone to the same temptation to power that Adam himself and Eve were um, were tempted with. Eve, especially as we see in Scripture, you know, you shall be like God. It's a temptation to power. Mm -hmm. And so, no, there's there's this failure on the part of, of uh, human beings to be able to resist these kinds of temptations without the power of the Spirit. And so we're all aware of that, and we're not casting stones at people, though it may appear to some that we are, because they're they're given over to the belief that that Newsom and others are very sincere in all of that, which uh, which to me is extremely naive, and uh, and their trust isn't well placed. Mm -hmm. But we do need uh, people who reflect our values right. to be elected, at least closer to what we have yes. now. And it comes down to, again, we don't have a governor, we don't have a president, we, we have, have a, a king, yes. And, uh, and you know, we do pray for them. We do lift them up in prayer. Uh, but as, as the American people, we can only take so much. Amen. And so, Pastor, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this. And church family, we do want to invite you to come out and join us on Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and 10.45. And Pastor David, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Been amazing studies uh, how Jesus is even... Last week we saw, don't you know that I fed the uh, 5,000 and had... Uh, the 5,000, 4,000, and he's teaching his apostles you know, that he's, he's, he's able to take care of them. Tomorrow night, on our Wednesday night oh, study, yes, Wednesday we're night. going to be looking at uh, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, um, probably verses 1 through 10. So Wednesday night, 7 p.m., uh, Ephesians, it's been an amazing study so It's a far. great book. And it's, we've been having a, a good turnout, and I want to invite you guys to come out and join us. And then, men, tomorrow's the last day to purchase your ticket for the Super Bowl breakfast for the breakfast option. And so you can actually stop by the gazebo after services tomorrow or register online, and we look forward to having you. Amen. Pastor, thank you so much for your time. God bless you guys. Thank you for tuning in to Unfiltered. God bless you.